FiberLine presents Training for the Fixter Laser Go Alignment System, featuring David Stroyevsky, President of FiberLine. Ready? Let's go. First, we're going to do a pre-alignment. It's important to always perform the following pre-alignment steps before beginning the actual alignment process. It's particularly critical to eliminate soft foot. If you don't, then every time you loosen and tighten the bolts, the movable machine will come to rest at a different place, making the misalignment very difficult to measure and correct. Most of our customer support calls are from users who did not first complete the pre-alignment steps. We're going to do four pre-alignment steps to facilitate the alignment process. First step we're going to do is we're going to do a rough alignment of this machine. And, it, and even though the sensors in our digital systems will accommodate as much as a half of an inch of misalignment, we might be concerned about how the shaft is moving within the clearances of the bearings. So therefore, we can use a feeler gauge or a shim that gives us some sense about how misaligned the motor is with respect to the pump. In this case, we were about 125 thousandths low on the motor. So now the next step is to actually make the rough alignment. So I'm going to lay out four 125 thousandths shims. With the pry bar, To complete the rough alignment, David is inserting 125 thousandths under all four feet. Now we've completed a rough alignment. We could recheck that. It's still a little light, but close enough. The second thing that we'd want to do is we'd want to check for what we call obvious soft foot. This is done with all the bolts still loose. It's a natural progression. We've moved from rough alignment, bolts are still loose, we're going to check it for obvious soft foot. When you got a motor that's got this kind of horsepower, it's about a 50 horsepower motor, the weight should be evenly loaded on all of these shims. And if they're not, then they will move. Okay? So what I do is, I'm going to check it here. Ah, see that's a soft foot, because obviously the weight isn't being distributed over that entire foot. So that one was solid, so what we do, and I happen to know that it needs about 15,000. So. Now what I would do then is recheck it. So if I've done it properly, then I shouldn't be able to move any of the shims. That creates weight being distributed equally over all four feet. The third step would be then to tighten the bolts down and we recommend a cross torquing pattern just so we can remember it so that every time we loosen and tighten the bolts we tighten it in the same way. The, the thing that most people do is that they are a little too aggressive. So what we want to think about is tightening these bolts in at least three passes through the sequence. So I'm going to just hand tighten to begin with. On the second pass, snug the bolts down, and on the third pass, tighten them all the way. Then the last step is to do final soft foot. Final soft foot's done with a 2,000 shim, because that's the spec. It's 2,000 of lift. So what I might then do is loosen any one of these bolts, and see whether the shim will go under it. If it will, it's got excessive soft foot. It's a 2,000th shim. Won't go. Complete the final soft foot check on the other feet. 
Now the motor's weight is equally distributed over all four feet. Now we have completed the four pre-alignment steps. Now it's time to take the go out of the case and set it up. First, mount the sensors on the shafts using the chain mounts. The S sensor is mounted on the stationary machine. It can be mounted on either the shaft or the coupling hub. The M sensor is mounted on the movable machine. Next, connect the cables from the sensors to the display unit. What is important is, is that it doesn't matter which cable goes to which of these connectors. Push the red button to turn on the display unit. The horizontal alignment icon will be highlighted. Push the OK button to start the horizontal alignment routine. Aim the lasers by adjusting the sensors to center the laser beams. Once the sensors are acquiring the laser beams, you should see both S and M sensor values in the boxes at the top of the display unit. Tighten the mounting bracket nuts with half a turn of the wrench. Before we enter dimensions and measure the alignment condition, we will first set alignment tolerances. Tolerances are based on the motor's RPM. Use the arrow buttons to highlight the tools icon and press OK to select it. Now use the down arrow button to highlight the tolerance table and press OK. David is changing the tolerance settings from 3600 RPM to 1800 RPM. After selecting the correct RPM, press OK to set it. Use the down arrow to highlight the exit door icon and press OK. Now let's measure and enter the dimensions that are required to measure alignment. All dimensions should be entered to the nearest one-eighth of an inch. The first dimension is the distance between the sensors. Measure from midpoint to midpoint of the mounting posts and enter the value. In this case, David has entered eight inches, which appears on the screen. Press the OK button to enter the value. Next, we measure from the coupling center to the end sensor. The system automatically defaults to one-half the distance between the sensors but you can override the default value and enter a new value if the distance differs. David's measurement confirmed that the distance is 5 inches, which he enters, and then presses OK to override the default. Next, measure the distance from the M sensor to the center of the front foot bolt. Enter it into the display unit and press OK. In this case, 5 and a half inches. Finally, measure the distance from the front foot to the rear foot, center of bolt to center of bolt in this case, 12 inches. When you press OK to enter this final value, the alignment measurement icon will appear in the lower right corner of the display. Next, we're going to measure the alignment condition by rotating the sensors and taking measurements at three positions. Before we take the measurements, here's a handy tip from David. What happens on these motors is a lot of them rotate. So to create a stopping point, I just use this simple magnetic baser, very readily available, and I'm using it as what's called a steady rest. From a training standpoint, I want them to keep the backlash out of this coupling, so I'm holding the movable side to keep the backlash going this way when I'm at my first position. Mm -hmm. and when I cross past noon, then I'm going to hold the other side. The sensors can be in any position to start measuring. The GO screen displays the position of the sensors as the shafts are rotated. In this case, you can see that the sensors are at about 1 o'clock. David initiates the first measurement by pressing the OK button. The GO takes multiple readings and then displays detector values in mils. These values will be near zero. Rotate the shafts until the sensors are out of the black zone on the display, then stop. Be sure S and M values continue to be displayed at the top of the screen. If not, the lasers aren't hitting the detectors. Press OK to take the second measurement. Rotate the shafts one more time. 
Again, be sure the detectors are outside the black zone on the display, and make sure you continue to see S and M values displayed at the top of the screen. Press OK to take the third measurement. The screen automatically displays the results. The LEDs indicate whether the alignment condition is within tolerance. A green light indicates the couplings are within tolerance. An orange LED indicates the alignment is out of tolerance by no more than two times the tolerance values. And a red LED indicates misalignment of greater than twice the tolerance values. Angle and offset values show the alignment condition of the movable shaft relative to the stationary shaft in both the vertical and the horizontal planes. The feet values are used for making corrections, which we'll do next. Even though the displayed results aren't live, the Go continues to monitor the position of the shafts with its true position sensing function. We'll first make the vertical adjustment and only enter the live mode when we are ready to make the horizontal adjustment. To correct vertical misalignment, we add or subtract shims at the feet of the movable machine. Positive values indicate the feet are sitting too high, so we'll remove shims. If the values are negative, the feet are too low, so we'll have to add shims. In this case, we'll have to add 7 mils to the front feet and remove 10 mils from the rear feet. We didn't need to go live to make these corrections because true position sensing was still capturing both the vertical movement as well as any unintended horizontal movement. This greatly reduces the amount of measure and remeasure that is often required with other laser alignment systems. Once the vertical alignment is corrected, we'll go live. Note that the sensors must be at either 3 o'clock or 9 o'clock in order to display live values in the horizontal plane. Since we're already at 9 o'clock, David just uses the arrow keys to highlight the shim icon and then presses OK. Watch what happens to the horizontal feed values as we switch to live mode. They were at minus 14 and minus 18, but true position sensing picks up unintended horizontal movements made during the vertical adjustment and recalculates the values displayed on the screen. With accurate values live on screen, we'll make the horizontal adjustment while watching the screen values change. This allows us to easily bring the shafts into alignment. As we make the move, the offset and angle values will change and the LEDs will indicate the alignment relative to tolerance. The LED changes from red to orange to green, so we're ready to tighten the bolts and check the alignment. Remember to use the torquing pattern and make at least three passes. The final step is to remeasure and confirm the alignment results. Make sure the remeasure icon is highlighted and press OK. You'll be asked to verify the selection. Repeat the measurement process. The result screen will again show the vertical and horizontal values and the LED will indicate whether the values are in tolerance. If the LED is green, you're ready to document the final results.